So the clinical considerations are related to antibiotic resistance being a significant problem, and we may feel somewhat removed from that if we're in ambulatory dermatology practice, because maybe sometimes we see a, a case that we think might be MRSA infection, which Ted's gonna go on, uh, go, on, go on in more detail with, but we don't necessarily see the things that our colleagues in infectious disease or in hospital-based practice, even dermatology hospital-based practice are up against with these more virulent pathogens and the fact that they're running out of antibiotics to use. But there's a cross between those. So we often see these numbers of the number of cases that there is resistance to antibiotics that can lead to significant morbidity and even mortality. But I think in the back of our minds, we are thinking, yeah, that's true, but we don't feel very close to that in the dermatology world. And a lot of us think, well, I don't necessarily see resistance that much. I don't really think I'm a part of that particular problem. And I don't think that's the case. I think we have to look at what we're all doing and be as judicious as possible. Now, the Center for Disease Control has started this program, this campaign, Get Smart, to try to get practitioners to think about how they're utilizing antibiotics. And that's what I want us all to do. I want us all to be thinking about, yes, we're going to use an antibiotic. We feel we have a good justification for it but we understand that resistance is an unavoidable side effect of the, of the antibiotic, even though we might not visibly see the consequence. And there's a lot of drugs we give that can have subclinical side effects until they emerge at some point in time. We can be giving methotrexate for years and not know that they're developing pulmonary fibrosis or liver disease that not, that's not yet manifest. So we have to recognize that that's happening, whether we're using topical antimicrobials and antibiotics or systemic treatment, and be thinking about how we want to manage that and just not ignore it. So if we look at resistance patterns, and this is relatively old data, and there's been newer updates, but when we look at some of the resistance patterns and things that we deal with, like antibiotic resistance, P resistant P. acnes, Vipirocent resistant Staph aureus, which at one time we thought was not going to happen very much, if at all, and now we're seeing more and more vipirocent resistance, especially with chronic use. Certainly, methicillin resistant Staph aureus. Uh, we see a lot of streptococci that are resistant to macrolides. And as you get into the hospital based area, vancomycin resistance, linazolid resistance, and many other resistance patterns. And these do spill out into the community. So we had a scientific panel meeting, a couple of them in the past, and more recently had another one, and we've joined forces with the American Acne and Rosacea Society. And these publications are available where we looked at a variety of different areas, how are we managing them in dermatology, and how we might do better. And quite frankly, and I think Ted will agree with me, there's more questions than there are answers, but that doesn't make us afraid. We have to continue looking at this. So we had the group together in September, and I want to go over a few of the things that we discussed, and we have now partnered with the American Acne and Rosacea Society, who's overseeing this particular project. And we had a lot of people there. We had people from the CDC, people that are well-known in the dermatology area for acne and rosacea. We had microbiologists, uh, and we had a doctor from Canada who's a microbiologist that's very involved in Canada with the counterpart of the CDC on antibiotic resistance, that he wasn't there at that time, but we've dealt with him helping with us from, from a distance. 